Okay, so finally we can look at some of these uh, ending techniques here, these calculations where we're getting the average, displaying the average, and also isolating the least expensive and most expensive items. So um, again, our loop is really doing all of this here. Um, we had talked in the previous video about printing the line items or the items from the vectors and uh, using setw to do that. So let's backtrack a little bit. I brushed over this in the last video, but um, these are for, get you know, to get the average price, we have to total up all the prices or uh, accumulate all those prices in like a running total. So I have um, a float here called total prices. That'll be our um, accumulator variable to get that running total. Very important that you initialize something like this to zero. Okay, and then the average price, I'll just go ahead and uh, initialize that to zero. And then, um, so those are floats because we're dealing with the prices. Again, um, on the real test, you may or may not be dealing with uh, a float. It, it might be an integer, so you, you need to be mindful of data types. And um, here, now this will be the same on the test no matter what. We have the index of the high the high-priced item, and then the index of the low-priced item. We're starting at zero, starting both of those at zero, because you've got to start somewhere. Okay, this is for our little our algorithms to uh, isolate the highest and lowest. So let's deal with the average first. This is easy. Um, basically, it's a one-liner inside of your loop saying the running total, this uh, total prices that we created, that variable is going to be equal to whatever's already in there plus the price of the item that we're currently looking at. So I'm pulling that right out of the prices vector using our, our at function as usual. Loop counter as vector index, okay, to isolate that current price of the current one that we're looking at. And that's it, just that one liner. So that'll get the running total of all the items and all the vectors in, in the vectors. And um, then finally, after the loop, so this is the end of the loop. You want to make sure you're outside of the loop when you're getting that average. The average price is just going to be whatever that grand total is divided by the number of items. Very important that you do not hard code a 10 here, for example. We talked about this in the previous video. Don't do that because remember, the user is allowed to enter more items if they want. Okay, so we don't know how many items are going to be in the vectors at the time this code is executing. So you just have to kind of leave the door open on that and just go with the size, whatever that is. That's what we want to, want to divide by. And then we can display that average price. Okay, so that's the average price. Let's look at the, um, the high and low values. So again, I have these indexes. I'm starting them at zero because you have to start somewhere. Let's deal with the, um, the low one first, okay? This is just a quick little algorithm. We're saying if the price that we're currently looking at using the loop counter as the vector index is less than or cheaper than the one that is currently the quote unquote low value. You know, the first time through, this is a zero. Okay, so we're, you know, as I said, we've got to start somewhere. So we're looking at that first item and saying, okay, this is the cheapest item. All right. Um, if the price that we're currently looking at is less than that cheapest item, then the the new index of the low becomes i, which which is the um, you know referencing the value that we're currently looking at. It's like this becomes the new reigning king of the low prices. Okay. Um, this is like index low contains the index of the lowest price as it stands right now. It might be knocked off its throne in the next iteration of the loop. Um, but and, the, and this line is in fact the knocking off the throne of the lowest price as it stands. Okay, but we're saying if the one that we're currently looking at is less than the reigning king of the low values, the cheap antiques, then we're going to knock that king off the throne right? Um, so yeah, and then the, the highest is just really very similar. I'm changing the, the variable names, of course, but um, we're, we have a greater than. So looking at the current price, 
If it's greater than the reigning king, okay, then the reigning king takes on the value of the, you know, the index of the reigning king takes on the, the value of i, and that becomes the one to beat, okay? So once that those, um, when, once the loop is done, okay, then um, index of low is pointing right to that cheapest item in the items vector and also in the uh, prices vector because they're in parallel. And that it's just, a, once I have that index, the index of the low, the index of the high, it's just a straight shot into those vectors, getting the item name, getting the item price. Okay, so look at the output here, the way I've constructed that. Our most affordable item is, that was my straight shot right into the items vector at, and that's my straight shot into the prices vector. Okay, you see that? Straight shot into there. Straight shot into the prices. Okay, and then the, obviously the same technique for the high, just changing the language a little bit. Our priciest item is, and that's the Swan uh, Salt Cellar for $179. So there you have it. Those are the techniques. The real exam is very, very similar, um, maybe not the same data types, but really the same techniques. And um, yeah, don't forget your cn.ignore, got to flush that clogged pipe, right? So um, yeah, there you have it.